Good evening, and welcome to the Poe Museum. The good people here at the museum decide to get into the Halloween spirit with a little bit of pumpkin carving. And I must say, this is the finest specimen I've ever laid eyes upon. While they put on their finishing touches, why don't you sit back, relax, and enjoy the latest installment of The Curator's Crypt. if you will. It's the pre-dawn hours of January 19th, Edgar Allan Poe's birthday, and a mysterious stranger clad in black, a long dark coat and broad hat, meanders through the Westminster burying grounds to make a deposit at Edgar Allan Poe's grave. Three roses and a bottle of cognac. This mysterious stranger and his annual rituals came to be known as the Poe Toaster. And that's about all we do know about him. But two of these bottles and a cryptic note he left one year are the subject of this week's Curator's Crypt. Well, let's start with what we don't know about the Poe Toaster. First of all, when did he start his tradition? Some sources say it goes back to the 1930s. The first recorded instance of him making this ritual is from 1950. We like to think maybe it started in 1949, which would have been the centennial of Poe's death. There was actually one fellow who came out and said that he started the tradition in the 1960s. But that's contradicted by the newspaper reports. We also don't know why he made his trips to Poe's grave. Was he just a devoted admirer? Did he have some other cause he was trying to promote? And why did he leave three roses? Well, there are three people buried underneath Poe's monument. It's Poe, his mother-in-law, Mariah Clem, and his wife, Virginia Clem Poe. But the Poe Toaster isn't actually visiting Poe's monument. He's visiting the monument that's placed on the place where Poe used to be that's just across the cemetery. So there's really nobody under that one. And why does he choose to leave bottles of cognac? There's no mention of cognac in any of Poe's writings. More appropriate would be maybe a bottle of Amontillado. Or maybe it's some kind of family connection. The Poe Toaster in 2004 left a note that might hint at it. He says, the sacred memory of Poe and his final resting place is no place for French cognac. With great reservations, but for respect for family traditions, the cognac is placed. The memory of Poe shall live evermore. So some kind of family tradition. But we still don't know what their tradition is, why this started. Also, we don't know where he comes from. He usually enters through the back of the cemetery under cover of darkness. People each year would wait outside the cemetery gate just to get a glimpse of him through the shadows. But then just as mysteriously as he entered, he exited. Could he be from New York? Could he be from Baltimore? Philadelphia? We're not quite sure. In 2001, just before the Ravens were going to the Super Bowl for the first time, he left a note that makes it pretty clear he's not a Baltimore Ravens fan. It said, the New York Giants, darkness and decay and the big blue holds dominion over all. The Baltimore Ravens, a thousand injuries they will suffer. Edgar Allan Poe evermore. 
Now, in case you didn't know, the note was wrong. Baltimore ended up winning 34 to 7 that year. So whoever the Poe Toaster was, not a profit. So that's a little bit about what we know and don't know about the Poe Toaster. But something happened in 2007. A fellow named Sam Papora, who's living in a nursing home, said that he had started the tradition himself. He confessed to being the original Poe Toaster. His story was that he was a historian for the Westminster Burial Grounds. He wanted to gain more publicity, more attention for the burial grounds. So he started showing up and leaving the cognac and roses on the grave every year. But people immediately called him out, said, you're just making this up for attention, that the tradition was going on long before you said you started it. And even people who knew him well said that, well, he liked to pull pranks, but this doesn't really sound like he did it. Also, his story kept changing over the years. And in fact, with each retelling, so we're not quite sure what really happened. At one point, it even sounds like he said that, well, maybe I didn't do it, but I know the guy who did it. In fact, I've heard a few people say that they know who did it or who at least one of the Poe Toasters was. But publicly, it's still a mystery. They're still not fessing up and revealing exactly who it could be. But how many Poe Toasters were there? At least two, maybe three of them. If it's going back as far as the 1930s, there could be many more of them. And that brings us to our note. It's from 1993. It's addressed to Jeff Jerome, who was the curator of the Poe House in Baltimore at that time. And it says, some traditions must pass while others take their place. The torch will be passed. And this implies that this is some tradition that's passed down through the generations. In fact, in 1999, the Poe Toaster of that year left a note saying that the last guy had died and now his son was taking over the tradition. But how many sons over the years have taken over this tradition? And then as mysteriously as it started, whenever it started, in 2009, the Poe Toaster came for the very last time. He didn't leave a note explaining where he was going. That was it. The next year he wasn't there. The following year he wasn't there. Jeff Jerome, who had been carefully holding a visual at the grave every year since 1976, finally declared the tradition had ended. And that's the end of the Poe Toaster. Until 2015, when the Maryland Historical Society decided the Poe Toaster is good for tourism, and they had a contest to have a replacement toaster so the new guy started showing up in 2016 in the daytime, not even necessarily on Poe's birthday. The first year he showed up on the Saturday before Poe's birthday. He plays a fiddle, he shows his face, not quite the same. So as far as we're concerned, the Poe toaster tradition has ended. Unless you would like to continue it. Why not stop by Poe's grave and pay homage? Or if it's more convenient, stop by the Poe Museum. And it was Jeff Jerome who was at all those ceremonies for so many years, who actually saw the Poe Toaster, who gave him a secret signal each year to let him know that he was the actual Poe Toaster, not an imposter. It was from Jeff Jerome that were able to display these bottles, which he personally saved from the grave, and this note that's addressed to Jeff himself by the Poe Toaster. So if you'd like to solve the mystery of the Poe Toaster and his annual ceremonies, why don't you come on down to the Poe Museum and check out our display. Thanks for joining us this week. I look forward to seeing you again next time in the Curator's Crypt. And if you'd like to see your next Curator's Crypt episode early, just join us on Patreon at patreon.com slash poemuseum to get new 
and exclusive content before anyone else.